Hey y'all, do you remember the table I refinished last week? 144 inches worth of it and eight chairs. Well, this week I'm gonna be refinishing the buffet that goes with it and you will not believe the redesign. Hey y'all, this is Eliana with Why Not Redesign. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This week we're gonna be finishing this buffet that used to be a china cabinet, a two-piece china cabinet of which we're only gonna be using the bottom part. My customer decided that she only wanted these and uh, she gifted the top of it to someone, I believe. Anyways, I am over here cleaning it. I, um, re I removed the drawers to clean them, sand them, remove the hardware, scuff sand this and prime it. This transformation is going to be unreal. I really enjoy taking pieces and redesigning them into several. This one is going to be just the buffet, just the bottom part, and I'm gonna be adding an entire new set of hardware and legs to give it some more height. I will be using seven inch legs um, in metal, and we're gonna go for a monochromatic black on black look for this one. So just stay tuned. I am, of course, uh, on here on the bottom, making sure that I fill all of the holes that need to be filled. On the drawers, we're gonna be okay, but I am still filling all of those little ghost uh, marks that some of the old hardware is leaving. And uh, on the doors, I am actually filling the entire thing because I will be drilling new holes. I am using my preferred black primer, which is Aqualock. I love using black primer when I am going to be painting a piece in black because it just makes it so much easier. There is less actual paint that needs to be used. Uh, in most cases, only two coats is necessary. And when I am doing the drawers, as you can see, I always prefer to also tape the insides so that there is no overspray that goes on the drawers. As I mentioned before, this used to be a two-piece china cabinet. So since we're only using the bottom, the top of it actually does not have a full top. It is only the hollow piece where the china cabinet used to go. Uh, we then need to replace or actually create a new top for it. And that's what we're doing here. I'm also kind of dry fitting where the legs will go. Uh, my husband is going to take the piece that we purchased at the hardware store. It's a two inch uh, piece that uh, it is a combination of different woods. I believe it's, there is a little bit of maple wood in it and something else. I'm, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about wood, but we purchased it and we're going to create the new top. He's also going to be routing it. I pre-drilled the holes for where the legs will go and then actually fitted the, the pieces onto it. We decided that we needed to add a little bit additional support. So that's what we're doing here. We're using our Craig jig to drill those pieces or pre-drill those pieces. And then we're gonna be dry fitting them onto the bottom. And that will be where the, uh, where the legs will have that additional support that is needed. After that, I went ahead and actually put those pieces or the legs onto the bottom. Like I said, these are seven inch um, metal legs. I purchased these from the big box, the bigger box store, the A store, and I will link them down at the bottom of the description of the video. These are super easy to apply. We flipped it over right there. You can see where that hollow piece is. So here we, my husband have made the cut and he also went ahead and used a trim bit to create an edge. I then apply glue all the way around it, a good amount of glue and then put the top on it and use my um, nail gun. Gosh, I can talk today. Sorry, you guys. 
but I use my nail gun to apply it and then putty all of the little holes that the nail gun created. Allow that to dry. And then sand it all back. My husband drilled the two holes on the doors and thank God that he has the patience that I don't because I was struggling. He said, just let me do it for you. He made a little template. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I have not brought my little Craig for the hardware from home. And so the struggle was real. He was here and he helped me with this. Thank you, honey. I just made sure that there was no ghosting, that all of the holes were done right, and then added a little bit of extra paint on there, sanded the top very well, made sure that there was no putty that was left, and gave the entire piece a good sanding, prepping it for the primer. I actually rolled the primer onto this since I had already painted the entire piece. I didn't want to take it back to the paint booth and rolling it works just as well. That is one of the great things about this primer and the paint that I use both. So here's the actual speed of me applying the primer. Not as quickly as I normally do it, you guys. Haha. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I love to speed up the process and back to speeding up the process because who wants to see me paint that slowly I applied two coats as I did with the sprayer but this time I rolled it I usually apply or use a foam roller for applying any paint I'm not a roller though I'm more of a brusher, but I wanted to make sure that there were no brush marks on this at all. So after I had already sprayed the body, the best next thing was to actually roll the primer and the paint. I'm finally applying the paint and I did two coats of the paint and I applied three coats of top coat on this piece. I added a little bit of the black paint onto the top coat to make sure that there was no hazing or anything like that on the uh, top once everything dried. Here I am applying the three coats of tinted top coat. The good thing about using the roller and the primer in black is that I did not need to change or wash the roller whatsoever. I went from applying the primer to applying the paint to using the same paint that was left over in that roller to tint the top coat and that was it. So now since this piece is still here I'm going to go ahead and move it so that I can stage That is my staging wall that I will be hopefully redoing soon because the black part that I painted is not working out so well for me anymore. We'll see what happens. Putting the drawers back in. I'm gonna stage this piece both with the table and without the table. So just as a reminder, here is what this piece used to look like. As you can see, bottom piece and top piece. Again, the top we did not use. Here's the before of the entire set. And here it is, you guys. This piece turned out really well. I really love the black on black. My uh, customer is absolutely happy with this. And I want to also thank my husband for the help that he provided. 
if you have stuck with me this far please be sure to subscribe turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of my videos and leave me a comment telling me what you think about this piece and about the entire set Here's how it looks and hopefully how it will look in the space. I removed the leaves that go into the table so that it looked a little bit differently, but the table was beautiful, the chairs look beautiful, and the buffet looks absolutely amazing. That additional height really gave it exactly what it needed. I'm really happy with the results. I don't know how well, when I will be doing another table, but I hope that you enjoyed this set. And as always, thank you so much for being here. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.